Hello. Welcome to this presentation of ATDI Inc.'s Spectrum Engineering Web Application, Spectrum E. This video will demonstrate some of the basic features of Spectrum E relevant to radio frequency planning. In subsequent videos, we'll focus on technology-specific analytical applications such as interference analysis and frequency nomination between proposed and incumbent frequency assignments. To begin, ATDI developed Spectrum E to offer its users the advantages of modern web applications. These advantages include, but are not limited to, a light client or zero footprint style delivery, cross-platform compatibility between a tablet, a PC, a Mac, or even a smartphone, the ability to offer a dedicated interface for different types of services, technologies, or customers, as well as several options for integration with external systems. In this particular presentation, we'll focus on the following key Spectrum E features, including login, navigating the map interface, streaming map data through a web map service, viewing the map interface in 3D within the browser, creating a network uh, either via mouse entry point or import from a open format file such as a comma separated value file, modifying saving sta station parameters, reviewing a network history, performing coverages and profile calculations, displaying the results, reviewing a prediction history, modifying the display palette, as well as accessing the support chat line. To begin, we'll start at the ATDI Inc. homepage, atdi.us.com. Going to the home page and then clicking on the Spectrum e-link under the software menu bar on the right will take us to a dedicated page that describes the features related to Spectrum e. If we click on the Spectrum e home link, we can now go to an HTTPS uh, website, a uh, secure website, where we can now initiate a session with the Spectrum e web application that is encrypted. Uh, we're offering a 256-bit encryption. ATDI would have to provide the user with their username and password once obtaining this information. The user simply clicks on the login button and they can access the Spectrum E interface. So you can see the first thing about the Spectrum E interface is it covers the entire planet. So you have JS data for the entire planet. Uh, down to three arc seconds for uh, anywhere outside the US. We can add uh, additional resolution information for any part uh, in the world. Uh, it can simply be uh, accessed by the user on an on-demand basis or they can pay for all of it up front. One thing to note is that as the user zooms in, they have access to more detailed information. I'm going to go ahead and go to the US so that we can see an example of some uh, some additional information. I'm going to go to the U.S.-Mexican border to highlight the uh, contiguity of the information across the border. And you can see that township city names start to appear, major roadways, county borders, um, and at, up to a certain point, the information will be limited in what it can provide. And so at certain resolution, there is no more information. However, I can simply pull in additional tiles of data, in this case aerial photography imagery, from a uh, WMS stream connecting to the Department of Agriculture's NAIP archives. So here I've gone ahead and downloaded an additional tile of information. Zoom in one more and get another tile. And what I'll do once the tile has been downloaded is I'm going to go ahead and convert this to a 3D view. One advantage of this uh, WMS stream is that these tiles are being downloaded to the server, so in the future the user won't have to continue to download tiles. They'll, once they're all collected on the server, they'll be there for access. Uh, because it is a web application after all. 
So I'm rendering the 3D view. One thing to note is the 3D view is creating a separate tab. So the user can always go back to their original 2D view if they wish. Here's the 3D view. Easy to navigate with the mouse by just dragging, clicking and dragging with the left mouse button. I can zoom in to a particular area. I can adjust the terrain elevation, maybe exaggerate a little bit. And if I have coverage data, I can overlay it on this display. I'm going to go ahead and close out of 3D view. And I'm going to go to the Home tab at the top, and I'm going to start an analysis. So to begin an analysis, the user first needs to go to the Networks option. By clicking on the Networks option in the Home tab, they see that there's a current network that's created because I have a history of previous uh, simulations. I have various networks in a, in a history list. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new one, and I will call it uh, Demo. And that becomes my new network. And essentially, that is my project. And so to this network, I can add radios that can perform simulations and so forth. And I can even send the network in an XML format to another user that may want to analyze it. I'm going to begin my uh, example here by creating a network in the northeast region near Washington, DC. I'm going to go ahead and click, look for an area a little bit more towards the roll part between DC and Maryland, DC and Baltimore. And I'm going to right click to create a station by mouse entry point. By right clicking, I have a pop up menu that appears and allows me to add in various different types of objects. Custom objects can also be implemented into Spectrum E. The various objects offered can also be restricted for different users. If I click on the first option, TXX radio object, I'm prompted to a parameters page where I have to specify some basic parameters for this particular radio. I'm going to call it a proposed radio, and uh, I can assign a directive antenna patterns. I can change the height, meters, or feet. I can change the power in watts or kilowatts. Those units can be adjusted as well very easily. I'm going to change the frequency to 155. And I'm, with that, I can be satisfied uh, with, uh, with the changes I wish to make to the parameter box. Not all the parameters need to be filled in, just what's appropriate for whatever I need to perform my simulation. Once I click uh, on the object, on the button to create the object, I'm forwarded to a network management box. This is also the second tab in Spectrum E in the principal menu bar. And in this tab, I can see that I can edit my object. If I simply select the object and click Add View Edit, I can return and maybe add a, a, a change to the call sign. Click Modify, and those changes are immediately reflected. Go ahead and switch it back to Proposed. We can also create objects by import. If I go back to the Networks tab, I have an option to import via CSV. I'm going to go ahead and select my file. And I've got a sample file here on the my desktop. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and import it as a TXRX type radio. Just click Import. Now I've created my second station. I'm going to go ahead and edit this one and call it Propose 2. And once I have at least two points on the map, I can create a profile between them. I select the two stations, click on Path Profile, and here we go. I've got a Path Profile report that has my basic link budget information. There are also reliability reporting options that will tell me if I'm uh, achieving my reliability objectives. I go to the Map menu. I can see the two stations on the map. There are many options in the software for adjusting the display of the objects, the colors, the size of their icons, their font uh, size, the, the type of 
label that's being generated, etc. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and want to run a coverage for the two stations. So I'm going to select the option Run Path Loss Matrix, and we can see I have different propagation models available. We can use uh, any of the propagation options included in our legacy tools, ICS Telecom or Hertz Warfare. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and click on a generic option, Run Path Loss Matrix, and then click OK. And the software will be calculating the result, and when it completes, it will return me to the uh, original, uh, the previous view. Um, I left the default parameters at 2 meters and 150 kilometers. It can easily adjust them. So I've just run a propagation analysis at 30 meter resolution, uh, or 1 arc second resolution, uh, to 150 kilometer, kilometers for two stations. It ran fairly quick. And I can display the results in either power receive units or field strength receive. If I click on power receive, for example, the software will ask me to save the result. And I will call it, uh, in this case, uh, demo. And it's a composite demo. So let me go ahead and put that composite name back in there. Click OK. Now if I go to the map menu, I will see my result and overlay it on my map. I can also see a legend bar on the left. If I click on the legend bar, I can see that I have options to adjust the display. If I want to, let's say, lower, raise the threshold of uh, my display to make 58 dBm, I can. I click Update, and the coverage will be re-displayed. I'm going to set it back to Neg 107. I'm going to go ahead and redisplay the coverage for one particular station in field strength receive units. I'll call it proposed. So now I have only displaying the coverage of that particular station and in a custom palette. This custom palette I can create by simply selecting on the option to create new palette. Or I can revert back to my previous default spectrum palette and, of course, adjust the threshold as well. In this case, maybe if I raise it to 50, we'll see a big difference in the coverage output, and we do. Change it back to 14. Go. Or I can display my custom palette make that the default. And there we go. There's several other features for manipulating antennas, creating custom reports, integration of Google, uh, importing from databases, automatic imports, performing electromagnetic compatibility analysis, interference analysis, frequency assignment, etc. that we'll review in subsequent videos. Thank you for your time and hope you have a good day.